good morning, everyone, and thank you, Mr. Sinha, for joining us today. Uh, before we start the conversation, I would like to ask everyone in the hall, how many of you buy jewelry online? If you can just raise your hand. OK. Uh, so if you buy jewelry online, uh, I'm sure like everyone is aware about Carrington. It's a very popular and known brand. I'm a customer, customer myself. I'm wearing one of the pieces. So we'll quickly uh, get into the conversation. Uh, today's theme is leveraging technology to drive customer uh, centricity. So Mr. Sinha, I want to start off with Carrot Lane Postcard. I think it's like the perfect example where Carrot Lane as a brand leveraged technology uh, to record personalized video messages on the rings for your loved ones. So if you can share what was the insight behind this. Um, jewelry as a category plays a very, very powerful and emotional role in the lives of people, right? Uh, we buy jewelry either for a very important occasion or if we want to gift it um, to a relationship that truly really matters to us. And, you know, jewelry is, it stays for a lifetime, right? So you buy the jewelry, but what we realized is that customers would buy the jewelry, the jewelry stays for a lifetime. But the emotion associated with that period, you know, at that moment of gifting, that emotion wouldn't last that long, right? So if you wrote, uh, if you wrote a small note with it, or if you said something, I mean, unless somebody was recording it, and notes also, they often get misplaced or they get lost. I'm talking about five years, 10 years, 20 years into the future. And we were um, thinking about how do we capture the emotion along with the moment of gifting the jewelry and allow customers to have it for posterity, you know, uh, so that they can look back about, uh, on it and relive those moments. So that's when we launched the postcards feature. Uh, for the audience, if you're not aware of it, um, you know, you, when you buy a Carrot Lane jewelry, you can actually video record your personal message for the person that you are gifting it to. Um, and whenever the person who's received the jewelry as a gift, the ring, we've started it with the rings category, she just has to scan her ring and the video will play back. So no matter where you are, uh, you just need to have your phone and you need to be wearing or have the ring with you and just scan it and it'll play back that memory and that emotion at any point in time. And I'm yeah. sure it's not an easy thing to do. So if you can share what were the you know, execution challenges and how has been the audience response? Okay. Uh, yeah, it was not easy. Uh, you know, um, when we were working on it, see, scanning the ring is actually not so difficult. But the problem is that, uh, you know, if we were doing it in our um, office and where we were testing it, we could control the lighting, we could control the angle from which we are going to scan it. Um, but when, a, when we have to make it in a way where a customer can use their phone, and every phone comes with a different camera resolution. There will be different kinds of lighting. They will scan it from different angles. So to make it work where that personal message of that individual pops up for that particular ring, despite all these challenges, was not an easy task. Okay. Um, and we have an in-house technology team. We actually worked on this for over one and a half years before we could bring it live uh, and for you our customers. Launched this the last month only. Yes, we did. Uh, we launched it just before Valentine's uh, Day, and we thought that was a great moment to um, be able to bring it to customers. Um, and in the first, very first month of February itself, we have had more than a thousand messages being uh, uploaded along with the jewelry that the customer, the ring that the customer has bought. Um, so definitely, it's had a great response. So it was only for the rings? If right now, we've started with rings. Okay. And um, we obviously want to take it over more categories. But rings is easy to scan. You know, if you do it for earrings, it's not that easy to scan. Or you need to take it off, So, which is why we started with rings. OK, that's very interesting. Uh, also, you know, you started off as an online brand and now went, then ventured offline. So from a digital approach, now the approach is omni-channel. So what is the challenges, you know, in ensuring a seamless experience across uh, online and offline channels? Right. Um, so I'll start, I mean, like you said, we started online. And the reason we began opening stores is because what we found in our early years is that 
many customers were coming to our website, going all the way to add to cart, but they were not finally converting. So there were many who were converting, but many were not. And add to cart is the most powerful signal of an intent to purchase for a customer. So when they drop off at that stage, you want to understand why. Um, and when we would speak to these customers, and they would say, you know, at the end of the day, this is jewelry, right? And I, I mean, I love the design, I love your pricing, but I'm not yet ready to buy it uh, online. Uh, so there were a bunch of customers who were ready and a bunch of customers who were not. Uh, and we said the only way to try and, you know, solve for this is to start opening stores and allow these customers who are not ready to buy online to be able to experience us uh, in stores. Um, that, um, you know, it was a very big learning journey for us because when we started opening stores, we had a lot of friction, right? And many brands went through it. Customers would come to a store and they would bargain for an extra discount. And if they did not get that discount, they would um, call up online. And the online person would say, okay, I'll give you an extra discount because the online person wanted the credit for it. Uh, and they would just give the extra discount and uh, the customer, we would basically make a fool of ourselves, right? Um, so we started, you know, we learned from that and we said, we will not do any discretionary discount. Yeah, so whatever offers we have, it is published on our website. The exact same offer will be available in our stores or online or anywhere else, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you remove any kind of reason for a customer to think one channel may be better than the other. Our policies are 100% the same across channels. Uh, but the other problem to solve for us was on the part of incentive. See, omni-channel is not just about opening stores and having online, mm -hmm. right? When the, let's say a customer calls an online customer service uh, person saying I need advice and I want to know if I can buy this ring. Now, if the online person knows that, feels that I will get credit only if the customer buys online, you know, for my incentive, they are not going to tell the customer, look, if you're not sure, go to a store nearby, right? They're going to try and convince the customer to buy online. And that may not be optimal because the customer may not be ready for it, right? And the same thing could happen at a store. Uh, if a store tells the customer that, no, no, buy here, two days later, if you buy an online, I don't know if you'll get the same experience. We are not, um, you know, it's not helping us in any way. Um, so we said we will give 100% credit to the uh, customer service person, irrespective of whether the, cust the customer is buying from them now or whether the customer is buying from somewhere else later. So if I have interacted with the customer, the customer may have bought 10 days later at a store. But if I'm an online customer service agent, I will get full credit for that sale as much as the store also will get, right? So now there's incentive for us to collaborate because if I can work together with them, I will be able to make sure that I convert the customer and uh, be able to, therefore, and be rewarded for it as well. Right? So I think in our initial years, we were trying to fix all of these uh, problems uh, on you know, removing the friction for an omni-channel brand. And now we've moved to a stage where uh, we are actually building an experience for customers by leveraging customer understanding, right? So now, um, you know, like, ex we are in Santa Cruz over here, right? And we have a store in Andheri West, we have a store in Bandra. Um, what we start doing now is we start trying to map what is it that our customer is browsing over here. So if I know that people in Santa Cruz and in the Bandra and Hiri West region, they are browsing certain designs much more than they are browsing some of the other ones. We will make sure that the inventory that is available in these stores are aligned with that, right? So in a way, you are just, when the customer comes to your store, you already have designs and pieces in the store that most of them in this area are liking. Uh, and that's when you truly start leveraging omnichannel. You know, you're using that information of the customer behavior online to actually enhance business at the store. Okay. That's very yeah. interesting. And since we are talking about inventory sales, yeah. I'm curious to know if you can share how much online and offline contributing to the overall growth okay. of Caroline. Uh, you know, that's a very, uh, <laughs> uh, that's a question I get asked quite often. And the answer is not an easy one. Okay, because um, if I s s tell you about where does the final transaction happen mm -hmm. and where does the customer finally buy, um, 
more than 90% of the final transaction happens in stores. We now have 260 stores across 100 cities. Um, so more than 90% is now happening in stores. But if I, if I flip the question and say, where does the customer journey start, right? Um, and where does the customer desire get built? Where do they decide what they want to buy and whether they want to buy from Caroline or not? Yeah, 80 to 90% happens online. Right? So by the time they come to our store, they have already experienced and they know our designs, they know the relative pricing and all of those things. So without this online space, that 80 to 90% business that's happening in stores would never be happening. Right? And in a way, it's fully integrated. The, the customer is not thinking online mm -hmm. or retail. Yeah, they are just thinking that I want to buy jewelry and where can I get the best jewelry for whatever I'm looking for. So if you talk about the customer profile, is it the same that comes online and offline? Or is the profile is different? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, a little, it's a little different. Some small, like for example, more customers online come for gifting, right? And you know, actually, um, one very interesting um, insight over here is that we all know men don't like shopping. And men going to a jewelry store is just like they are completely out of place, right? They don't know. So they really love the fact that they can buy online, right? Okay. And they really love the fact that, again, we have a 15-day money-back policy. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like it, we will take it back and give you a full refund, right? So that's a big question because for men to understand what jewelry will my spouse like or my daughter, whoever they are buying for is... It's a black hole out there. Yeah, they are very rarely going to be able to get it right. So for them, the convenience of being able to buy online and knowing that if they don't get it right, it can still be fixed by exchanging it for some other piece of jewelry or something. I mean, that's great. Mm -hmm. So a lot of gifting happens, and men buy more online, especially okay. if they're buying for gifting, and women buy. Women prefer, prefer to come. For them, it's, an, it, it's not a... You know, it's not something which they enjoy spending that yeah. time. They want to try out those designs, right? They're thinking not just what I'm going to buy now, but what I'm going to buy next time as well. That's very interesting that men buy jewelry more. Uh, also, you know, Carrot Lane is now a part of Titan Group. And, you know, I just want to step back in time when the partnership was done. Carrot Lane started as a, like an online brand, while Titan's strength was offline. So what were the learnings you took from Titan and vice versa, what did they learn about online from you? OK, uh, I'll start with what we got from them. Um, Titan, as you know, runs Tanishq, which is India's most trusted jewelry brand. Um, and you know, the, uh, we had started our business in 2008. The one thing, money can buy pretty much everything. The one thing it can't buy is trust, right? Mm. So for us, this association with Titan allowed us to build trust with customers and in a way leap into the trust building space because of course step by step we were beginning to build a customer base and uh, a trust with them but this allowed us to really take a leap into that space and one of the first things that we did in 2016 after this association was we rebranded ourselves to say carrot lane a tanishq partnership Right, uh, because that truly expressed who we were as a brand, an independent brand, but in association with Tanishq. Um, we also learned a lot from Titan about how to run physical stores, because we didn't know how to do that. We knew how to sell online, and we had opened a few stores, but they were just very, very few. Uh, but running the store, how to manage the operations, how to deliver great customer experience, um, and in fact, now many of our business partners or franchisees are franchisees who've been with Titan for many years, right? So we were able to leverage this uh, franchisee community with them as well. Um, what Titan got from us was, um, uh, so Titan had been watching this space mm -hmm. for a long time. And of course, they had Tanishk and they launched Mia after some time. but. Um, they did not have the understanding or the deep understanding of how online customer behavior is and how do you engage and build that online traffic and convert that into uh, stores uh, or footfall traffic. Um, and that was a space where we were able to add value to them, you know, this learning that we had. 
Okay. Okay. And also, I want to understand how does Caritin elevate customer experience? Um, yeah, so it's very, very important, you know, when customers, actually for any brand in any category, but particularly so when they're coming to buy jewelry, it's a very special moment for them. Um, and we have a belief in Caritlane where we say that, um, you know, it's the small things that make a difference. Mm -hmm. So actually when the customer is walking in, it's not as if we do something which is, um, you know, which requires a lot of money or something that will create um, uh, a special experience in a way that requires, that's intensive. Yeah, it's little, so I'll give you examples. Like we have a rule in our stores that um, the customer should never have to open the door, right? We should open the door for the customer. Uh, we must greet the customer within the first three seconds of them entering. Many of our okay. stores don't even have doors, right? They're open mm -hmm. entrance, like the mall stores in particular. Right. Um, we must greet the customer in the first three seconds, and obviously body language plays a very big role. Um, not just that, we have, um, so there's a whole host of lessons that we've learned over time and small things that could make that difference. Um, another thing that we do, and that really has helped us build loyalty and repeat, is that most brands, you know, after you have finished the transaction with the customer, you forget the customer, right? And, the customer will get an SMS or an email saying, please rate us, you know, now NPS question is, is there, right? Uh, but that's more like an automated email. Uh, what we do is we take the time to call the customer on the fifth day after their purchase, right? And uh, we ask them that, look, is everything okay? And are you still happy? And, you know, we know that up to 15 days, we can do a full money back for them. So we know that if they are not fully happy right now, we can solve it for them. And indeed, one of a customer will have some questions saying, oh, you know, the ring size, now that I'm wearing it, it's actually one size small. Mm -hmm. So when you proactively reach out to the customer and you solve any small concern that they may have, uh, they appreciate your brand so much more, right? They really feel that this is a brand that thinks of me even after the sale is over. They've not forgotten me. So it's this whole journey from pre-sales to post-sales. Mm -hmm. But okay. little, little things over there that we do to try and elevate that experience. Okay. Uh, so that you spoke about the customer experience. If we talk about the marketing and communication strategy, what is there for, uh, you know, uh, strategy for the carrot lane? And, you know, what is the media right. mix? What is the preferred medium for carrot lane? Okay. Um, actually, I want to start by saying that I truly believe that for a category like ours, our brand is built not by the marketing money that we are spending, but with every engagement that we have with a customer in our stores. So I feel that our true brand builders are our jewelry consultants or sales staff in stores or online, because with every interaction with the customer, they are building an experience that the customer has about Caritlin, and that's really what the brand is. Uh, having said that, marketing plays a very important role in building awareness because I need to get them into the store in the first place, right, before right. I can do all of this. Um, and given that we cater to a younger audience, mm -hmm. we cater to an audience which buys more for everyday wear, uh, and this audience lives their life mostly in the digital space, mm -hmm. uh, we actually do most of our advertising in the digital space, whether it's you know, through Meta or Google or YouTube uh, and all of these uh, platforms. Instagram is a big platform for us. Um, uh, and uh, so a lot of our, and today we live in a world where the communication is actually one is to one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we are not running an advertisement where, you know, 100 million people across country are going to see the same ad. So the communication is different to each individual depending on their profile and depending on, you know, what they are likely to engage with, uh, with us. Uh, we have little bit of time, so I'll quickly ask my last question. Uh, if you talk about, you know, the e-commerce space, digital space, a lot of scam is happening. So I want to understand what Caritlane is doing to mitigate that and also, you know, reduce consumer concern when it comes to buying jewelry online. Okay. Um, to buy, so scams actually are, you're right, they are happening, you, you know, you keep reading, every day you read in the newspaper some new kind of scam that's come up. Um, see, to build, first of all, to build trust with customers, it, you have to work on it 
over years, right? It doesn't happen. And it's about every situation, how you deal with it, that adds up one after the other to build trust. And I feel today we are at a space where uh, a brand, I mean, at least Caritlane has been able to build that trust for customers to feel comfortable about shopping online. Um, but if you are, uh, if you are a new brand, I think your single biggest focus has to be on how can I make sure I make every experience and we were always focused on that. Every single customer, mm -hmm. how can we make sure we give them a great experience? You know, we live in a world today where people, you know, will write about their experience online within minutes, uh, whether they love it or whether they hate it. Um, specifically talking about scams, um, you know, we, uh, we put, you know, the best that we can do as a brand is to tell our customers that, um, you know, come only to Carrot Lane website, do not listen to people who just call you randomly, uh, always validate if you have any questions. Uh, for example, when a customer shops from us, we'll send them on an email a small snippet that says that, you know, we don't do any uh, raffles or we never ask for OTPs and stuff like that because commonly these, this is what happens. Having said that, we don't have any control about any random person trying to use our brand name or any other brand's name, right? So I think people have to just be that much more careful and that much more aware uh, about it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Atul. I started the conversation by asking everyone in the audience. I want to end by asking you, do you buy jewelry online? I do, yes. <laughs> um, for my wife, uh, mostly. Uh, but even when we have to gift to others, uh, I do buy online and sometimes we go to but stores. But do you prefer well. online or offline? <laughs> it depends. <laughs> Yeah, okay. it really depends. Um, I remember when I joined Caritlane eight years ago, um, from my first salary at Caritlane, uh, I had to buy something for my wife, right? So I bought this necklace that I thought was nice. Uh, so the first day when I gifted it to her, so I ordered it online, I got it home, and when I gifted it to her, the first evening she said, this is wonderful, I love it, thank you. Um, and then two days later, she asked me, uh, Atul, you had told me something about the 15-day exchange, no, at Carrot Lane. What is that policy? <laughs> so I said, yeah, yeah, well, you know, if you don't like it, you can exchange it. Uh, but that was one of the, the points that made me confident about buying the jewelry because I knew that. But I was also one of those husbands who could not guess what she really wanted. Um, and uh, over time, you know, I think now we've reached a stage where I tell her, look, why don't you just pick what you want rather than me trying to guess what you would want. Yeah. Thank you so much, Atul, for joining us today. It was a lovely conversation. Thank you. Thank you.